features that we had to begin with, we now have only a uh, only a handful. Cool. All right. Now, once I've got that done, now I can hit export out. I'm going to take it out to After Effects, but um, we can export out to a whole host of uh, applications. And this is where some of the differences between PFO and PFO Pro uh, come to light. PFO Pro uh, has uh, a greater number of export options here, uh, but you can check out the differences on the PFO website at pfo.com. Um, we're going to just take that out to After Effects. I'm going to keep my scale factor set to 100 here, and let's just uh, browse where this is going to go. Let's take it into PFO export data, and I'll call this tabletop 001. Okay, so let's uh, let's come into After Effects and see what we got. Okay, so let's import our tabletop 001 here, and that's our Maya scene file. And as you can see, it's brought in a number of null objects and our camera shape here. And let's check out all the keyframes it's got here. Cool. So let's um, let's see how we can start working with this. Let's just bring in our tabletop there. And let's just check to make sure the uh, to check the accuracy of all of this. So I'm just going to come in with a bit of text, uh, and I'm just going to type in text here. Make it a 3D layer, and set our position to zero zero zero, and our output is zero 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 as well. So this should now be exactly at our uh, origin point here. You can see the text is really really big at the moment. That's not ideal. So I'm going to come in and just zoom this down here. And that should now be fitting quite happily into our scene. Let's turn off all of these nulls just for the moment being. Just take a little look at that. Cool. All right. And we can actually reposition this up and down, left and right as we want to. The important thing to remember if we are wanting to uh, to match move a particular object is to keep this Z position in the right sort of plane. So for example, if we were wanting to match the depth of one of these cups here, it wouldn't be enough. Just for example, if we were to rescale and reposition a little bit here, just to sort of go coincidentally wherever we wanted it to go, we'd really want to line it up properly in the proper Z space as the cups are. So that's where these null objects actually really uh, are there to help us out. And that's why I've kept quite a few of them up. Because uh, what we've got here, let's just scale these down so we can see them a little bit better. There we go. Cool, so what we've got here is, you know, various points. If I just uh, lock my tabletop there for a second, I can see this cup here Let's uh, hit uh, Command or Control X to uh, cut, and then Control or Command V to paste that back in. That pastes it back in at the top, and I'm going to rename this shape now Front Left Cup. And let's take a look at our Z position here, and that's minus 56.8. Bring that in there, and I know that my text is going to be now moving correctly relative to that cup. Now that is essentially the workflow to get from PFO into After Effects. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take this just one step further and show you how we can work with these 3D positions and into effects that actually don't support 3D, they're only uh, two-dimensional effects. And I'm going to turn off our nulls again uh, just for the time being, um, just so we don't have those distracting us. So. What I want to do is I want to, um, let's create a new layer, a new solid layer, and I'm going to call this beams here. And I'm going to look for an effect, which is called beam, and bring that in. And this is great. This is just a, a little laser beam effect. Pew, 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 pew. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to do a sort of laser generated text in the middle of our table. Um, I need to tweak a couple of things here. I need to tweak the length from 35% all the way up to 100%. Uh, and I need to change our time now to 50% here so that we're getting a beam that goes directly from the starting point over here to the end point over here. And now what I want to do is I want to 
track this to one of our laser beams and then into the text and sort of have that writing the text on here. Now we've got a, we've got a couple of different challenges here. Now one of them is that you know what we could normally do if we're using regular 2D point trackers uh, is to come in and track our cup here uh, and then well I don't know what we track here to get our, our sort of sense of 3D here. We could probably track something a little bit here and try and offset it but it wouldn't be perfect because we look at the starting and ending point here, we've only got two dimensional arrays to work with, we've only got an X and Y position to work with. So we've got to do a bit of um, a bit of clever stuff using expressions. So let's, um, before we even get into that, let's just come in and change up our laser to be a little green, little green thing. Of course, we need an, a way of, well, first finding where our, our starting point is gonna be, and let's take it to our little um, laser emitter here laser emitter cup yes and let's do our same trick with cut and paste so that's command x command v or control x control v if you're on windows do the same thing and we will rename this back cup left or back left cup we don't really need to uh, to know any of its position here because we're going to use expressions to find that out automatically so let's come back and turn our beam back on here. Now, if you're not using expressions in After Effects already, then I would very, very highly recommend you um, you have a look at them and get into them. It's such a great time-saving feature because it allows you to automate tasks that would otherwise be quite laborious to, uh, to do. So what I'm gonna do to add an expression is I'm going to Alt-click or Option-click on the stopwatch on starting point, and this will now bring up our little expressions line down here. Now I'm going to try to avoid typing as much as possible. I'm going to let After Effects do most of the hard work because that's uh, that's what I like to do. So what we're going to do first is we're going to tell After Effects what layer we want to uh, to have it look at. So I'm going to write target layer equals. Then I'm going to use our pick whip over here to target our back left cup here. And that types in all the information it really needs. And we're going to add a semicolon. Then I'm going to do uh, final position equals. Uh, target layer, then dot, and come into our layer space transforms here and go to comp. And let's just type in our little array here. Now, what this is doing is it's looking at our target layer, which is our back left cup, and transforming that 3D uh, array into a two dimensional array here. So here's the final expression for you, and this is what it's doing. So you see, without any actual manual keyframing or anything, it's now sticking to a little null layer, which would be the cup. And we can do the same thing with our ending point. Let's just copy that and then come to our ending point. Alt click on that to bring up the expression and just paste that in. That's gonna give us our end point exactly the same as our start point, not quite what we're after. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in, we're gonna take off our target layer, change that, so delete what was originally there bring it down to our text layer here, and that's now gonna to point to our text layer. Now at the moment, it's only gonna to point to, um, to the same edge to the bottom left-hand corner of our text layer, which is not really the, uh, the full effect that we want. We're just gonna add a bit of randomness to this here. So let's come in here, add another semicolon. Uh, let's say x equals, x equals final position. And we wanna have a look at the X of the final position that it's given us, which is square brackets, zero square brackets. And then we're gonna go plus, and then have a random number in there. So type in plus random, and then we're gonna go zero to 500, for example, or zero to 300 maybe. We'll just type in random 300, add another semicolon at the end there, and then go Y equals final position, which is the value that we're creating up here. Make sure I spell position correctly. And then we want to have a look at the Y value there, which is square brackets one, close square brackets, plus random 100 pixels. Let's give that a go. And then the final thing we need to type in is just the final array, which is X and Y. And this will then return our new X and Y values. And that's bouncing array all over the place, which is fantastic. Now the only thing is it's going behind the text layer, so let's just put the text layer in front. 
and sometimes it's going underneath. So maybe we need to, I see what the problem is. So instead of going plus random 100, what we want to do is actually go minus one random 100. So that will then go up instead of down. And that's bouncing away quite nicely. Could probably have that going up even higher actually. So get a nice good, good old random number. There we go, 200. And the X could probably be even higher as well. So maybe 500. Cool. Now, the other great thing about using random numbers, if I come back to my beam here, if I duplicate this and turn on composite on original, uh, what I'll get now is two beams floating away. Then if I do another five, we've got a whole load of beams floating away there. Cool. OK, now what if I want more? Let's just lock that for a second. Let's take some more from this generator over here. And that's selected that null shape number four. Do the same thing, cut and paste this over up at the top here. And we'll call this back right cup. Lock this, turn the visibility off. I'm going to do the same little thing here with our beams. Let's come into the bottom one here, duplicate this, and let's call this back left start. So we can see it a bit better. Now let's come into our effects, open up our starting point here. And instead of having the back left cup here, we'll do the same things we did before to so change the target layer up to our back right cup. And our endpoint stays the same, so that's all we need to do. We just need to change that there. Now, if we come in, we can just duplicate this up a whole heap of times. And this gives us our beams going through. So you can see where we can start to uh, we can start to go with this. Um, I can come in uh, and let's just add a bit of fractal noise, for example. Let's just scale this. Bring this by my beams. Set my track mat here to Luma, and we can start to sort of fade some of this stuff out a little bit. Bring the contrast down. There we go. So we get slightly lower light in the beams. Of course, you can see where we see where we're going. I'm going to actually just duplicate up that fractal noise here. Put that above my text and do the same thing with the text. So set that to Luma. But this time, I'm going to bring the contrast up and bring the brightness up as well. Just adds a bit of um, just creates a little bit of transparency in there. Before we finish this off, I just want to show you just another fantastic uh, thing about expressions is that if any time we change where that text is going, because everything else is working with the expressions, we don't have to change where the beams are going one bit because they will automatically follow our little text there. Let's just finish this up, just add a couple of glows to everything and uh, yeah, see see where we go from there. And let's just glow the alpha channels. Let's glow the right thing. So let's glow the alpha channel there. Um, we go and yeah, add another glow to that. Really glow it up. Bring the intensity down, the radius up. Cool. And then we'll copy that also to our beams layer as well. Of course, you can start to see the, uh, the, the type of effect that we can we can go for I'm going to add an adjustment layer just to choose one of my preset color effects here just to tie everything together probably a bit harsh at that point so let's uh, render that out and have a quick look Cool, and there we go. Now, of course, there's still scope we can we can do to, to finish this off to get this looking even better. Uh, but I hope that gives you an idea of, of what we can uh, what we can do. Cool. So what we did is we tracked the shot in PFO. We added a couple of um, user features and we deleted the other features that we didn't need, and then brought that data into After Effects. Then we positioned our text where we needed it to be. Then using expressions, we were able to link 2D effects to our new 3D track data. Cool. Well, I hope that's been useful for you. My name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.